Welcome to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out with Julie Caraccio. Every Tuesday at 1 p.m., hear easy to implement tips on decluttering all areas of your life physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Learn how to release clutter and get organized to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. An award winning professional organizer and coach, Julie is passionate about supporting people in clearing clutter so they can share their gifts with the world and live a more joyful and fulfilling life. Hey everyone, it's time for a giveaway! Adam Levine, not the guy from Maroon 5, but the creator of Rapid Gift Bag, has generously donated a Rapid Gift Bag for one lucky winner. You can listen to my review, it's a December bonus, or watch on YouTube. This giveaway is for all of November, so you have up until the 30th to enter. To be entered, simply rate and write a review of Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Once you've done that, email julie at reawakenyourbrilliance.com with your name and where you reviewed our podcast, iTunes, Stitchers, TuneIn, etc. Once verified, you'll be entered to win. Drawing is December 1st. Good luck, everyone! Hey everyone, today we are thinking outside the box. If you've listened before on clearing the clutter inside and out, you know I love talking about clutter in all of its forms, physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, and energetic. Today we are going to be talking about EFT. Now I've had the pleasure of working with today's guest. EFT is a great tool. She's gonna to tell you all about it. All right, let's get started. But first I wanna tell you about today's guest. Susan Hannibal is a medical intuitive, holistic healer, and teacher in private practice since 1999. She specializes in the treatment of childhood abuse, disassociation, panic, phobias, combat trauma, and complex PTSD. She is the developer of the EDIT process, Emotional Detox Intuitive Therapy, a multifaceted holistic self-healing method in the evidence-based field of energy psychology. She is the author of the book based on her life and her practice, Spiritual Compass, Practical Strategies for When You Feel Lost, Alone, and God Seems Far Away. Welcome, Sue. Hi, Julie. Thank you for having me. Well, let's get started. What exactly is EFT? EFT is called um, Emotional Freedom Technique, and it's basically an acupressure tapping technique for emotional and, and some physical issues. So instead of using needles in the acupuncture system, we tap on the emotional release points on the face and hands and people feel the relief emotionally in terms of the emo emotional charge of a particular memory. And sometimes they can get a relief from uh, physical pain that is what we call somaticized, which means it's connected to an emotion. Excellent. Now, are there any side effects to EFT? There are no known side effects to EFT. It's a self-healing, holistic, method that is based, like I said, on acupuncture. It's been around for years and years. It's been in wide use in the United States and worldwide, probably for the last 30 years or so, and even in disaster zones where people don't even speak English. And they can get relief from even extensive traumas like things that have gone on in Rwanda. So you can deal with that as well as a headache or your childhood. It's a one-size-fits-all holistic healing method. It's amazing. Can now obviously it's been uh, used to help people heal trauma. Can you and you said a headache? Are there other things that you can share that it's been used to help perhaps with clients? And I can attest I have done EFT with Sue. There are no side effects. <laughs> um, well, if we're going to talk about clutter, the important thing to know about clutter and hoarding and things like that is that it's highly metaphorical. So what I want your uh, listeners and viewers to understand is that their attachment to an object or a memory of an object is linked in the brain. So that's why we bring home souvenirs from Paris or Disneyland or whatever. We want to bring home a, a tangible memory that's going to link us through an object to the fun times. But unfortunately, you can also have objects or possessions that link you to something unpleasant. And so that can be, if you had a great childhood and you, you've got your childhood teddy bear, you're going to remember warm and fuzzy times in mommy's lap and being read stories. If you had the childhood from hell, you're going to have unpleasant memories. So I would say don't keep the teddy bear if, the, 
if the unpleasant memories are going to trigger you. So um, you need to understand when you're when you're having a tug of war over an object is what is really going on. What what are you in resistance about? If you're if you've got a closet full of clothes that don't fit you that are out of style, maybe you're hanging on to that for metaphorical reasons. One of them which might be deprivation. If you felt like things were taken from you or you had a lot of loss and grief in your life, it's not about the dress. Or it may be you're wishing that you could still be that person that wore that size 10 in 1970. You're, you're longing for who you used to be. You've lost part of who you used to be. So, you know, successful aging and integration of different folk parts of our life is supposed to be a relatively seamless thing. I mean, you might complain about the extra 20 pounds when you're 50 or whatever, but you know, most people manage to make that journey without, you know, going on Prozac, although some do go on Prozac. But if you're in a in a clutter situation where you're drowning in it, you've got some emotional baggage that you need to clear. Excellent. So then it can also help with, because I think you did a great job. You know, I believe I shared with you a story off camera, how a woman who had stuffed animals who was in her forties and more stuffed animals than, I mean, a, a huge collection, but right. because when she was little, they were all taken away from her. She had no say. And so that was her way of trying to recapture, I guess, what had happened to her. Yeah. It was about trying to heal that pain of that de depri deprivation and loss. And the underlying issue, it may be conscious or maybe subconscious was nobody's ever going to take anything away from me again. And so when you get into hoarding, which we'll talk about later, that's in the extreme. But clutter can, it, it's so metaphorical and so fascinating. It can be about avoidance. It can be about overwhelm. Because if you're avoiding something, you're in fear. That's anxiety. When you've got a free ticket to a vacation and the limousine is waiting, you don't have any avoidance. You're, you, know, you get your stuff packed, you're out the door. But if, you've going, if you're gonna go to the dentist, um, maybe you might have a trouble you know, getting yourself out of bed. So it's all about anxiety and fear. So that's kind of the first step. And so then using EFT would be able to get to the root of that. As you were talking, I was just thinking a lot, I have talked on this show about living in the present moment because that's our, our point of power to change but you know if you since you work with a lot of people who've been traumatized i know you you've worked with sexual abuse survivors um military personnel when you experience trauma like that you can understand why someone's stuck in the past so using eft would also help you be in the present moment more is that correct right it, it helps you get unstuck from whatever it is that is keeping you in the trauma or in the memory or unable to move forward or unable to forgive your past or get yourself out of traumatic memories that are bleeding through, through in the extreme, like with combat veterans or even people that grew up in a war zone in their home, flashbacks. That's a, that's a psychotic um, episode where you're not in present time. If a veteran is having a flashback, they are in Iraq as far as what their reality is. You know, they woke up from it in the middle of the night. So people have a tendency to recreate chaos and trauma. And that's counterintuitive. It's like, why would you cre recreate the pain? Well, because it's a way to try to deal with it. But they aren't understanding that um, they need help to release the originating trauma in order to get rid of the clutter. You can't just go into someone's house and say, well, let's just get a box and throw all this out. The person's going to go crazy. You know, we see that on the hoarding shows because it's not about that. It's about their pain. So that's, I would say the first thing that they should do is tap, do the acupressure tapping, the EFT tapping on anxiety, overwhelm, being stuck. Just take a look at what's in the present moment of what you're feeling. It could be, even though I don't want to throw this away, even though I don't know why I have to keep this, I just do. It doesn't matter. Don't judge yourself. Just if you can focus on it and write down what you're thinking and what you're feeling and not judge it and see if it makes, quote, sense, that's the, that's the first step to opening up what's really under the radar. Well, then can you go ahead now and lead us in a short exercise for EFT? And, and really quickly, this is something I went to you and I found it very valuable to have you, I, I think, because anyone can learn EFT, correct? Right. It's in the public domain. Anybody so, can use it and learn it. But I think what's valuable with what you do is is getting the sentence or getting 
taking it, what I call taking it down to figure, okay, what's the root of the cause? Where, what is it that we need to release in EFT? So if you want to pick something related to clutter, can you share a short exercise? I think that one of the, one of the clutter things is knickknacks. You know, they just have little bits of things on every surface and that gives them a feeling of maybe not being alone because their space is not empty, it's filled. So I'm just, I'm talking metaphor language 101. You have to look at things metaphorically. It's not that they love collecting all these dust things. There's a reason for that. So it's either the deprivation or the loss or I'm going to do whatever I want or I never had money, now I do, I can spend it. I mean, it can be even things like um, feeling like you want to get even with somebody. If your parents deprived you of an allowance and you wanted stuff and you didn't weren't able to get it on the quarter a week they were giving you, well, now you're going to just spend your money out. You know, it can go anywhere. So let's let's just say um, um, too much stuff, too much stuff in my room, and it can be any kind of stuff. So the way you would start with that is, uh, and there's 14 tapping points that, and they correspond to the 14 meridians in Chinese medicine. You would start on the side of your hand. They call that the karate chop point. It's the fleshy side of the hand between the knuckle of your baby finger and your wrist. And so you just take three or four other fingers and you tap like that. So that's kind of on the karate chop point. And this is what we call the setup. So we say, even though, and then fill in the blank, which is always talking about the problem. Even though I have this anxiety about all the stuff in this room, and even though I feel overwhelmed, which is probably you know part of it, um, I accept myself, I'm doing the best I can. Then you say a self-affirming affirmation. And then if you still feel like there's more even those, you can stay on that, or you can just go directly to releasing the um, anxiety and overwhelm that we just did in our setup. So the first tapping point would be on the eyebrow, right where the hair starts. Most people end up somewhere on their forehead or in between their eyebrows, but it's right on the edge of your, of your um, eyebrow. So you take a couple of fingers and just tap there moderately, um, hard so that you can feel the stimulation five or six times. This anxiety and overwhelm. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know why I can't get rid of the stuff in this room. It's just too much. And then you tap outside the eye between the edge of your eye socket and your hairline outside the eye, this overwhelm and anxiety. And then you can just, there's really not, not a, a script. You can just say what you feel. And sometimes if I'm with a client, I chime in stuff and they chime in stuff and we just chug along underneath the eye, under the pupil. That's a point for anxiety. And it, it comes to, uh, it's connected to the stomach meridian. Anxiety, I don't wanna get rid of this. What if I get rid of this and I never can have any more? Underneath the nose. I don't wanna be deprived. I need to keep this stuff, but my husband's nagging me to get rid of it and I don't know what to do. I just feel stuck. Underneath the lip, between the bottom of your lip and your chin. This anxiety and overwhelm, I just feel stuck. I I can't, I just can't do it. I can't do it. Maybe I need to hang on. Collarbone. So, and then you can, you can still talk about the problem or you can use an affirmation. Even though I still have this anxiety and overwhelm, I'm doing the best I can. I'll figure this out. Then you go to underneath the arm about four inches down on your side seam. This remaining anxiety, this, this overwhelm, this feeling that I'm stuck in the long version of EFT, you also use the fingers, but we're not going to do that today. We're just going to go to the top of the head. All the acupressure uh, points and meridians go on the top of the head. So you just kind of tap the top of your head in a circle and still keeping your focus on the problems. Um, this anxiety and frustration with myself that I can't solve this problem. All I got to do is get rid of this and I just can't. I just, I just can't do it, but I'm doing the best I can. And so you kind of rock and roll around the present moment or the situation and you should start to feel a little bit of calming a little bit of centering and other thoughts or other layers might come up that might take you to a memory of childhood or some other type of loss it's not going to probably be about the figurine it's going to be in the metaphor zone and it's very interesting how that unwinds that's absolutely fascinating now, i want to let people know that all of the episodes of clearing the clutter inside and out are video on YouTube and obviously podcasts, which you can find a bunch of places. There are also, Sue and I, I believe, did two other interviews. We did, did a full hour on EFT. It wasn't just focused on clutter. So if you're interested in seeing that, you can, as well as we did one on healing trauma. 
So it probably came in that, but those are other resources in addition to this episode that you might want to check out. Now, can you the share- people that are having clutter that realize that they have trauma, they should watch the trauma thing that we did because that will that will tune them in to exactly what is under the radar so they won't have to um, you know, struggle with it or they can call someone that is experienced in EFT and trauma and help that, they can guide them through that. Because so you can get into some pretty deep territory if you're doing it by yourself and it can be very emotional and painful. So it's good to have some support if you know you had a real um, difficult time in childhood, maybe don't do it yourself, get some help. Yeah, I would agree with that. It was invaluable to have because you sometimes can't see your own stuff and having right. someone who's not attached to it on the outside looking in saying, hey, let's check this out. Mm -hmm. Soothe your soul with our customized aromatherapy blends designed to support you in clearing clutter. Our unique blends include Space Clearing, Zen Mind, Serenity, Awareness, Natural Awakening, Loving Kindness, Gratitude, Forgiveness, Blissful Balance, and Present Time, which will become your favorite. Learn more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Can you share with us a success story? Now we're talking about hoarding in a, in a moment, but just for someone that you help with what I'd call kind of regular old clutter, they aren't a hoarder, they're just maybe overwhelmed. Do you have a s short story that you can share? Mm -hmm. Actually, it was a friend of mine and she had a, um, an emotionally um, depriving childhood. There was enough things and there was enough food and all of that, but there wasn't enough love and stability. And so it transferred itself into um, a lot of clutter and a lot of getting rid of stuff and buying new stuff that she didn't need. So there was this pattern. And I said, what? why are you doing this? You're spending thousands of dollars. The stuff you have is perfectly good. No, I need new stuff. So it was a feeling of rejection that she was trying to work out subconsciously. So she... She felt rejected in childhood and, and unloved and neglected. And so she was transferring that onto her clutter and her possessions by rejecting and abandoning, I guess you could say, her perfectly good stuff and getting new over and over. And so I pointed that out to her. I said, you know, this isn't about that you need new furniture or new you know, stuff. This is the, the past bubbling up into your present. And when she realized that we did a little bit of work and she stopped doing that, but she didn't know why it was, that's the anxiety. It, it comes up and bubbles up inside you like a deep well. And all of a sudden you're in it and it may not make any sense to your partner or your friends. And it may not make sense to you. Like you were saying, you know, it's kind of like, it's kind of like a tapestry in front of your face and then you pull it away and you go, Oh, there's the picture. I thought this was a twig, but no, it's, you know, two birds. So it's, the metaphor language is, is medical intuition in manual mode, and that's how I teach it. Is it read the energetic signature. Read the, the mood or the feeling or the connected dots between things that seem to be disconnected. There's going to be an emotional pattern there. And once you see that, it's like a big key. It unlocks a lot of stuff. I, I see. <laughs> No, I just so appreciate this because a lot of times people talk about physical clutter. That's only where they concentrate. And a couple of people started talking about mental, but I was like, when I'm going to do in the show, I'm bringing in emotional, spiritual, and just have started to bring in energetic. I thought, you know what, I'm going to go for it. Going to talk about the woo woo and hopefully it has a positive response. But that's why when I talk, dig deeper, dig deeper. Because when you figure that out, then it's all good. You've solved it. You can move forward. One of the questions that your listeners can ask themselves to try to get to the finish line here is what or who does this remind me of? That is a very, very interesting question because when someone's caught in a pattern, events or memories or behaviors are running amok and you're stuck in it. That's what a pattern is. They'll come in to my office and they'll say, why does this keep happening to me? Okay, well, you're in a pattern. Let's figure out what's going on. What are you repeating or what are you avoiding? And what or who does that remind you of? And they'll go, oh, it's my mother. Oh, it's my ex-husband. Oh, it's the, and then, then, then we're on to what we need to clear. So you just take it one layer below your rational radar. And when you ask that question, another question is, 
And these are EFT questions that were formulated by Gary Craig, the founder of EFT. He's a genius. Is um, what or who would you most like to have skipped in this lifetime? I grab another whole sheet of paper when I ask him that because it's going to come out. Well, let's see, there was this and this and this and this, and they did this to me, and this is what I did, and oh, and the wounds just start bleeding, and that's what you need to heal. It's not about the clutter. The clutter's just, it's like an addiction. You don't treat, I don't treat addictions directly unless someone is a blackout drunk or putting a needle in their arm, then we have to call the doctor and put them in rehab. But I generally say to an addict, okay, so that's what you're doing. You're eating too much, you're drinking, you're smoking, you're internet porn, whatever it is, what's the pain? And they look at me like, um, what do you mean? I'm here to quit smoking. I know that. Tell me about the anxiety of why you need this anesthesia. Let's talk about that. And sometimes they just start crying. So well, you can ask themselves these questions. That's wonderful. And again, that's something you can do right now. Or if you're listening in the car, go home and sit down and, and take an hour to reflect on this. Now, I'd love for you to let's we're talking about trauma getting deeper. Talk about working with hoarders and, and, and what you do with that with people who are hoarding. Hoarders are um, extremely wounded people. They are caught in a cycle of uh, all of these metaphors. It could be the deprivation, it could be the grief and the loss. I, I spent a lot of time watching the two network hoarder shows and I would sit there with a pad inside of kind of metaphorically diagnose what I'm seeing on the screen in spite of what the organizer and the psychologist are saying because they're they're kind of up here, they're, they're one dimension away from what the real problem is. And I would say to myself, they just told you what it is and because you asked them, well, when did this start? And it's some kind of loss. When my father died, when I lost the baby, when I got a divorce, when my mother died. And instead of going into the grief, knowing that that's what's causing this, they go, oh, well, let's just see if we can get rid of this bottle cap. And then the person goes, no, I need that. And it's, it's beyond reason because it's not about that. It's about the pain. They just told you, but for some reason, I don't know. It wasn't explored you know, in the episodes, at least not what I saw. So the, um, the hoarders that I have worked with, um, I, first I do a medical intuitive reading on every new client, just getting their name and age. We connect on the phone, we say a prayer, which is basically let me know whatever I need to know to help this person. And I scan them intuitively and I write out a pretty um, uh, extensive document, a page and a half, usually single spaced. And I organize it according to the chakra system because that seems to be the best way to correlate you know, the emotions in the body. Then they give me a trauma timeline after I give them that document. They write their own list of what has happened. Then we each have do the two documents and we figure out what connects to what. So um, the hoarders that I have worked with have had issues, of course, of loss, deprivation, and also um, either needing to be invisible or needing to protect in the extreme. So. The, a, a hoarder that is in, in that hoard to, to protect and to disappear inside there so nobody can get them is reminiscent of someone who is in morbid obesity. In our society, if you really want to be invisible, weigh 300 pounds and walk down the street. Everyone will ignore you. It's also a metaphor of maybe it wasn't safe to be small. If bad things happened to you when you were small and didn't have much weight and were helpless and bigger people hurt you, you want to be big and powerful to prevent that, that's trauma speaking. It's not about put down the fork. So this is why diets and things have such a high a failure rate. It, I mean, and nutrition is important. Portions are important. Calories, I understand all that. And so does everybody who has ever tried to diet. But if you have a gaping wound in your psyche, it doesn't matter. Oprah can't even solve her problem because her issues are emotional. And we all know, because she's been very public about her wounding, those wounds have not been healed to the degree that I know they can be. And that's why she has been able to lose the weight. So all right, well, Oprah, way, if you're it, listening to my podcast, call Sue at the end. We will we'll give her a few minutes to tell her how you can reach her, but she's available. <laughs> but, you know, there's Oprahs all over the world. There's, they're, they're everywhere. And they are carrying their pounds of pain and grief 
I mean, sure, they might have a metabolic disorder, they might have diabetes or whatever, but you know, there's a huge population that we can't seem to reach um, with the endless diet and nutrition books that come out every January 1st because nobody has really addressed that kind of pain. I think you're right. Well, I think you need to write now, your next book will be Don't Diet, you know, really get rid of the trauma. But my question, next question for you is, how do people know, how can they find an EFT practitioner? Now, I love Skype. I love Google Hangouts on Air because, you know, I coach people all over the country and you would be able to tap with them and do this. But mm -hmm. if they, you know, want someone that they would like to go see in the office, how do they know they're, they're getting an EFT practitioner, not someone says, hey, I can do this, but they don't know what they're doing. Well, when you're looking for someone on the internet, you know, that's, that's a concern. Um, I would say, ask them for references, ask them about their professional training. There's a um, international association called the Association of Comprehensive Energy Psychology. It's a formal um, association that we, many of us belong to and they have professional training. The website for that is energypsych.org, energypsych.org, and you can go there and it's find a practitioner. So you can put in your zip code and you can find people. Um, some of them are certified and some of them aren't, but you can look to see whether they have the type of experience that, you know, that you're looking for. And there's also a list of research under the resources tab on that website. We have probably over 55 or 60 studies. I, I'm not keeping exact track, but we've got a lot of published peer reviewed research in professional mainstream journals like the Journal of Psychology or the Journal of Traumatology. And we've got the studies and you know the evidence is definitely there, but we're getting some pushback, of course, from mainstream psychiatry and, and conventional psychotherapy. But that happens whenever you're trying to shift a paradigm. Well, and I'd encourage people, you know what, do your own research. There are, Sue has a, I don't know if you still have this, you have a video helping a soldier using EFT to overcome trauma, but there have yeah. been studies done and, and think outside the box, but I encourage you to figure out if it feels right to you, then do the investigation. And if someone tells you no, just whatever feels right to you. A lot of EFT practitioners will offer a free 15 or 30 minute session. So you can connect with them either on Skype or on the phone or in person if you find someone local. You can see how the fit is. You know, maybe not every um, practitioner or every therapist is a good fit for a particular individual. So there's thousands of people that specialize in different things. They have different levels of experience and training. I don't have a license by choice, but I have conventional training in psychology and I have been in private practice for 16 years. But still, having said that, you have to know what your limitations are in your scope of practice. So if somebody comes to me that's clearly mentally ill, I'm not going to do tapping on them. I'm going to send them to a psychiatrist or a clinical psychologist because that's the kind of care they need. Excellent. Now, do you have any final thoughts on using EFT to clear clutter? Final thoughts. Don't judge yourself. Yeah. Everybody's got issues. This is just mine. You know, that can be your, your mantra to begin with. And it's a journey of um, discovery and healing. And it may take you into some deep water, but you don't have to go there alone. And um, in my experience, when you heal the deeper issues, the presenting problem or pain seems to resolve itself. So assess your your hard drive i use the analogy of a hard drive i hold one up when i'm teaching and um there's also a trailer on um palomarcollege.edu and uh, the the link is palomarcollege.edu backslash pctv which stands for palomar college tv backslash eft that there's a trailer there to a documentary that i wrote and co-produced in 2006 and it shows people how to do tapping and there's the hard drive and stuff. So it's a, it's an interesting little trailer, but it's also available for sale on my website. And it's a, um, it's an easy primer to be an introduction to um, EFT and what it can do for you in your life. All right. Outstanding. Now, any yeah. final tips that you want to share for people to clear the clutter in any area? I would just say, think about what, what the energetic signature or what the emotional quotient is for that object. 
What does it mean to you? Again, what does what or who does this remind me of? And see if you can retain the memory and the feeling without keeping the object, if it's something that is taking up too much space. Now, having said that, there's good connections, positive connection to objects, and then there's the flag that covered your father's casket. You know, it, I don't recommend staying connected to things that bring up pain. Don't throw out your whole family album if that brings you pain, but, you know, be selective. And there's no reason that you can't keep a memory without keeping the object. But I would say keep the, keep the positive links and try to minimize the negative links. All right. Wonderful. Now, tell, tell us how can people find out more information, books, whatever else you'd like to share. Well, my website is guidedhealing.com. I'm also on Twitter. My Twitter handle is PTSD Healer. PTSD stands for Post Traumatic Stress Disorder. PTSD Healer on Twitter. And I've recently put up a Facebook page. Uh, I have a Facebook page for Guided Healing, but I put up another Facebook page that's called Military with PTSD Out of the Kill Zone. And that's to bring EFT to the attention of veterans and their families for combat trauma. I'm also writing a second book, which is going to be called Out of the Kill Zone. And it'll be true stories of combat veterans and civilians um, caught in the crossfire. All right. Well, I want to thank you, Sue, for our interview today. Thank you very much for having me. All right, everyone. You've got some assignments. Check out EFT and see if that can help you. And go out, clear some clutter to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire. Thanks for listening to Clearing the Clutter Inside and Out. Sign up for our newsletter and receive a free copy of our 10 clutter-free living tips. Ready to create the life you choose, deserve, and desire? Learn about Julie's services including coaching, classes, affirmations, aromatherapy, and her unique How to Declutter Your Life course and more at reawakenyourbrilliance.com. Don't forget to subscribe and join us next Tuesday at 1 p.m. Remember, the journey of a thousand miles begins with one step.